Hello, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me, guys. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time when we can relax and craft together and we work on a project from beginning to end. So it is Monday. We are back working on the Charming Chevrons quilt. We are free motion quilting this. This is the quilt I'm using to learn how to free motion quilt. And we're in the bonus round right now. We've, we've worked through each row, um, starting from scratch, starting from nowhere and trying to improve on uh, skills along the way. And now we are on the last row we've free motion quilted the label like all the text for the label is in the last row and now we're framing that with just all the fun things that we've learned along the way uh, so that is what we're doing again today we're maybe about a third of the way done with the fill around the text and uh, I think that's what we'll be doing today and tomorrow I'm hoping to get all the quilting done by uh, Tuesday so Wednesday, I am not gonna be here. Just letting you guys know early. Ooh, Jennifer, I do not want your flu. <laughs> uh, I, I am gonna be gone though on Wednesday. It is my husband's birthday and uh, we are gonna go uh, get some food and watch a movie. So I will not be here on Wednesday. Uh, I will be here on Thursday and Friday though still. Uh, Thursday and Friday will be the new Splendid Sampler 2 block. A splendid sampler block eight on on Thursday. So all right guys, let's flip around and start free motion quilting. I haven't done it for a little while, so we're gonna need to do a little warm up, uh, a little easier stitching. We'll see how it goes. All right, flipping you around. Okay, here we are. So this is what I what I mean by um, we were writing the uh, the label in the last row. So I'm actually working from the back of the quilt now just because I wanted uh, that the back of the quilt where you can be able to read the label. So look, the label, uh, so we've we've signed it and look, we've, we've filled, made stitches all around it. So we have the start date, January 2018, uh, the end date, August 2018, and here's where we uh, uh, where we left off with the fill. So we wrote all the way down to the end and it goes the entire width of the quilt. And then we bounced back, we framed it all the way back to the beginning again with another color, cause why not? <laughs> and then we started just filling it in and I'm gonna keep on filling it in, uh, filling it in today. So to start out, we are right here. Let me grab the other glove. Oh, here we go. Got my quilting glove and my grip it here. I think we're going to start just to, just to warm up a little bit. I think I'm going to start with those, uh, wavy lines, just, you know, I don't know, a little ways here. I think it's really pretty. Those wavy lines here, here we did, um, earlier. So, so like this, maybe where we go wavy line and then we switch directions to go the other way. I love this little kind of fish that happens in the middle. So I think this is what we'll give a try for, for at least a little bit here. What might be cool is to try it like split, like maybe, maybe we go to here and then maybe it, maybe it turns into two wavy lines or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll just see see where we go. This is a whole up for grabs thing. <laughs> so if you have any ideas, uh, spit it out. I do want to do some just drawing because that was really fun. We did that in some earlier blocks where it's like, let's draw a flower or we drew even a frog. So let's draw a, fl a frog. But now I think we're a little bit better at filling in around the shape. So I think it'd be fun to draw, I don't know, some animal or a flower or something and then fill in the shapes around it. Uh, to make it jump out. So I don't know. We are going to experiment again today. So I got all the supplies here. Let's get down into the machine. So I may run out of both bobbin and top thread. We're just going to have to see, see what happens tonight. There we go. I think, I think you guys can see and I can see now. All right. So let's just start. Ooh, a hedgehog. That would be fun. I'm, I'm not actually all that good at, at um, 
doing those freehand. Actually, that might be fun because we could do a ton of little spikies for the back. Okay, I kind of like that idea. We might have to give that a try. All right, I think I'm going to start kind of right here. We're going to go to this line. Okay. Oh, first I got to bring the thread up, the bobbin thread. Okay, did we catch it? Ugh, no. Don't always seem to catch my bobbin thread. I think I'm just not patient enough. Ooh, my, uh, my foot came a little loose. Let's tighten that up. All right, Bobbin, come here. Not yet. I don't know, do you guys have this problem at all? I have a, I sometimes cannot get this Bobbin thread to come up. Maybe I'll go forward. like I got it this time. There we go. Huh. Just sometimes it just doesn't want to grab, I guess. I went forward that time, but usually I go backwards. Okay. Let's get it going right here. Now my presser foot is down. Should I have the presser foot down when I when I try that, Holly? I guess I don't really know. I think it stays in the bottom when, when you're sewing. Yeah, it does. I just, um, I bring it up to the top of the quilt for, for free motion quilting. Uh, all right, let's start with a few stitches here. Man, without, um, with the weekend going by and our, and our, um, uh, time doing the splendid sampler quilt, it always seems like so long. It f seems like a foreign concept again doing the free motion quilting. So let's just warm up and see how it goes. I think I need to travel up a little bit. I added a, an extra little wave in there on accident. <laughs> Take your scissors and pull up on the fabric. Red coming from up the needle helps pull it up. Okay. Oh, the screenshot. I was putzing around with the Instagram filters earlier. <laughs> uh, so I'm just filling in the space with these little swirls. Not swirls, little wavy lines. And I'm kind of using, now I'm using my foot as a, as a guide to, <laughs> That one's really odd. Let's just check the, uh, I think, um, looks okay. Man, whenever I go fast, too fast though, then, then underneath the bobbin thread stops looking good. Thanks again for coming, you guys. I hope you had a great, uh, great weekend. I kind of feel like it's Wednesday already, man. I, I, I don't know. I think I fit in a lot to the day today or something. I don't know. <laughs> so you've missed a few days. Oh, Nolene, I'm sad to hear that. Ooh, I am, I hit a, ooh, I am not budging from this point. There, I had a, geez, I'm yanking on it. I was stuck in this point. So I must be right on the back. There must be, yeah, I, I am. On the back, I'm right, uh, or there must be a lot of bulk at this point or something. All right, now I'm going to go in the other direction just because I, I like that other, um, I like that kind of like fish that this makes here. There, kind of like that. Oh, Bonnie, happy birthday. No cooking all weekend. Nice. 
Actually, that's what I did. That's what I happened to do all weekend. Saturday, I went to the farmer's market, which is just always so fun. Always feels like a special day when you get to go to the farmer's market, I think. And, uh, um, man, just got tons of vegetables and literally cut vegetables uh, all day and cooked stuff all day. Oh, happy birthday to you too, Libby. And I'm still not done. We had to just put the rest in the fridge because it was just too much. But I cooked some, like a beet and buckwheat risotto, which is amazing. And um, what else? Oh, they had, they had, oh God, what are they called? Uh... Oh, bitter melons. Have you guys heard of bitter melons before? Um, they had at the, at the farmer's market bitter melon, and I, have n I had never used that before, so I'm like, ooh, what's this? Let's give that a try. Um, I'm getting a funny little swirl in here. And uh, I think I want to change it up now, but I tried this bitter melon. We'll just go with this swirl, this double swirl. And it is bitter. <laughs> uh, but I cooked it with like some soy sauce. We're just gonna bump back and forth a little bit. And uh, uh, in the wok and it did uh, uh, some other things with it. And now it just tastes like kind of, I don't know, like a soy saucy. You still have a quite the bitter taste to it, but I think on top of rice, it would be like really, really good. So I don't know, that was, that was my experimental um, dish for me uh, this time around. <laughs> the risotto, they call it a risotto. It's from this cookbook that I have that I love. Uh, oh, I can show you the cookbook. I think I still have it. It's within arm's reach, but I made, um, I love this cookbook so far. Let's see. Oh, here it is. I made this uh, beet and buckwheat risotto. So it's actually buckwheat groats, and then it has uh, beets cut up into it, and then it has the beet leaves and the beet stems roasted in with it as well. And then, you know, a bunch of um, flavors like ginger and garlic and all that. So it's, it's not rice. It is, um, it's buckwheat. And oh, the texture of the buckwheat and the the uh, beets is so freaking delicious. I love it. It's totally my new favoritest, favoritest thing. And now there's there's beets at the farmer's market. And I just love that you can use the whole beet. So even the stem. So the, um, the uh, I'm just doing a bunch of little wavy things. <laughs> We're just keeping on with the waves, I guess. Um, but the, uh, oops. oh, sorry, we, we got disconnected a little bit. Oh, Hazel, it is called uh, Simply Vibrant. Here it is. But it's all kind of veggie stuff, but it's all just bright and colorful, and everything's been uh, super delicious so far. Here's um, the author. Uh, Simply Vibrant. Totally, totally recommend so far. And... I mean, I barely ever cook with a cookbook, so it's been kind of a fun new thing for me. All right, I kind of want to do, I almost want to do a feather up here, but we, we just did a feather a little while ago in the same direction. So I think, I think this next bit, like over here, I think I'm going to do the bump back feather. So I need to do something else to get up there. Should we just, uh, should I just try and swirl? swirl my way up there. I think we'll do that. We haven't done swirls in a little bit and that's kind of, this is kind of swirly, these waves. So we got our little warm up in. Now let's try and do the swirl into this space. I like these elongated swirls. Okay, we got to get in there. <laughs> I always get myself completely stuck though. I did not leave enough room to get in and out of here. Um, more than one time. So we're going to make these a little bit smaller. Skinny, 
skinny swirls. There we go. Now I can get back out. Let's add to my little um, uh, wiggle there. There, I need to get in and out of here again, but that's not happening. We'll add it just some extra. What we're doing. I still have so many trouble, so much trouble with these swirls. I'm just kind of swirling my way out of here now. All right, still need help with the swirls, <laughs> but you know, it's something. Try and get another swirl up here. Wow, it's a little hard to move tonight. Oh, there we go. I just got stuck, stuck on the back. Just gotta re shimmy my fabric. Yeah, Jane, I think we cut out for a sec here. And you know what? I hope we don't. I actually turned off the air conditioner, and that might mean we overheat. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. But we'll be doing, we'll be doing, uh, um, this free motion quilting tomorrow too. So if we do get stuck, then it won't be the end of the world. We're just making little flames here. Pink eye peas and lady peas. Oh man, that sounds amazing. Gretchen, I have never heard of either of those before. But I love um, like beans and, and peas and stuff. All right, that was a wackadoodle swirl <laughs> that we just did there. But you know, it's getting me to this, to this um, feather that I want to do. So I think we're going to squiggle it up this way. We're going to go up and then back. We're just gonna freehand this guy. Uh, Tracy, I'm quilting on the back. I know it's sort of odd. I'm doing it on the back because I actually wrote my label uh, in, a, in a different color here. And I wanted the label to be written in the correct direction on the back. So I just decided to flip it around um, on the back because on the front, it's just gonna kind of blend into the pattern fabric. So it's just one special row where I wrote my label on here, the text for my label, and now I'm just filling it in. So yeah, only this is the only row that I'm doing that with. All right, we're gonna swoop up this way, I think. Ha ha, good, I got it in one swoop. I was afraid I'd have to stop, stop in the middle there. All right, I'm gonna do the top little plumage. All right, and then I'm gonna come back down and then I'm, I think I'm gonna hit, well, let's see, how should I do this? I think I'm gonna come all the way down and just um, do each side by itself. So if I have to come down this three times, I'm gonna, I could maybe try doing the thing where I do both sides at once. I think I did that earlier, but I didn't do that with the bump back. I think we'll just do both sides separately. Yeah, I think it's kind of fun. So we have um, a gold thread for the text and we have this like bright teal thread that I think we'll run out of, but I went through my, uh, my thread earlier today for a different reason and I found some more of the exact same weight and exact same color, same brand of that green. So we'll just continue with the green versus a different color when I run out. Okay. We're gonna start out with some itty bitty petals. Okay, here's that first bounce back. I'm kind of doing it by feel though, because I can't see it. Because I'm doing 
teeny tiny leaves here. <laughs> See, I'm doing the smallest, smallest leaf. You're totally in love with variegated thread for free motion. Ooh, see, I would love to try that yet. I do not have, I don't think I have any variegated thread. Um, like for quilting. There, now they're getting a little bit bigger. Ooh, that one I could have worked on. Oh well. <laughs> See how little these are? They're going to get bigger and then this side is going to be really big, which will be kind of funny, I think. We're just literally filling however they fit in the space here. That one overlapped a bit. It's a little hard to see see them with this ruler foot. We're getting it. There must be a really big seam here. It's kind of bouncing around a little. So I left, I left the, the, uh, my outer border a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, there's must be a lot of bulk on the other side. It's hard to move. All right, here's my last one. There we go. And I, I'm just going to follow my way back down here. So this is a lot of center lines on it, but oh well. Okay, let's swoop it all the way in here. <laughs> so this side's gonna have really big ones that are gonna get smaller and smaller and then big again. Feel like I'm stuck on something again. Let's, let's shimmy this top up a little bit more. Okay. Oh, thanks, Nolene. These feathers are fun. I, I still really like doing these. And feathers, like once. Once you kind of get the concept of it, then I think they get really fun. It's it's one of those things like, oh, wow, how do they do feathers? How do they make them all nice? And then when you realize, oh, I can do that, it gets really exciting. <laughs> Ooh, what did I do? That was odd. Maybe that was supposed to be a bump back. Oh, I, I think it was, but... I just came all the way back down here. So that one's not a bump back. I'm like, why am I not bumping back on that one? Hi, Lisa. If you wonder if there's a place that can tell me how big of a square Ooh, for continuous binding. I bet you there is, um, Gretchen. I actually not done a binding like that before. I'd love to try it sometime. There, see, that one I got a little weird, but again, I couldn't see where I came from. Then I get thinking about something else and I forget where my path was. All right, I think this is gonna be our last one. I'm gonna fill in this whole space here. Okay, there's our feather. I love it. The swirl by your right hand looks like a bird with a sharp beak. The swirl by my right hand. Oh, like right there. <laughs> yeah, yep, I, I didn't bounce back on those guys all that well. All right, we did a feather. So now what should we do? Um, we could, how much more do we have? Oh, we got quite a bit. 
quite a bit left here, so we have plenty of time to try other things. Um, let's see. I don't really want to repeat things, but I do like I do like like the squiggles and stuff. Oh, Lisa, we uh, if you look at the older videos, I mean, this is our last row, so this is this is as good as I am right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to trying to learn. Um, learn different techniques and stuff, and now we're this far. Uh, you know what? I think let's try this the this apple um, or the orange peel, but maybe a little wonky and uh, um, clamshells. Are those the? I think are we talking about the same thing with the the orange peel and the clamshells? I can't can't remember what clamshells are. We're gonna try this orange peel thing. Oh, there was those, I think um, someone posted it, um, those like kind of daisies. We could try those. Uh, let's, let's do these, I wanna try this um, uh, orange peel thing quick first, where we, where we make one loop, um, one um, bump, and then like, a bump and another bump, but we're gonna do them smaller than we did last time. Oh, but you know what? We're gonna end up down here again. That's fine. Maybe we fill in, maybe we fill in the shapes a little bit. We'll figure it out. Or maybe we just do this. This is kind of cute, just like this. It's kind of like a little spangled thing on the top here. Let's fill it in again. Like this one will go like this and this, but then like let's add a little blip on the inside of it. There we go. That's what people do sometimes, add little special spangles in there. Let's do that again. So this one we'll do without the spangle. I'm actually kind of coming to a corner here, so we'll we'll do some weird try try fold thing. <laughs> like where they all come to the center. It'll be a little goofy. We're making it up. Oh yeah, this would be an awesome border because it's just it's just it looks like a like a garland almost. All right, here's my second one. This one will add the little detail. And now we'll do the next one popping out there. And then we'll come down to this point again. That's a fun corner thing. Okay, I'm totally in love with this. <laughs> um, so technically we could come back and do like the bottom. It's like in theory, in theory, um, in theory we go as far as we want and then we come back and then we kind of got this square, but I kind of like it as just like hanging garland. So let's just, let's just keep going. We could, we could fill in all these spaces with, I don't know, a bunch of crazy lines back and forth, which maybe why not? Because, because this is kind of crazy town where we're, where we're playing with things. I think I'm going to do it. Just for the sake of, I haven't done like a really dense fill yet. I'm gonna do one more of the spangled ones. So adding that little lip in the middle. I think I want to end it on a, on a, um, on a non-filled in one. to adjust. I think I'm gonna just try, ooh, why don't we just echo? Ooh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do a really thin, really close echo of this angle. I think that's what we're gonna do. Oh, and I keep saying the, I keep saying the word that I can't say.
So I'm just trying to fill in space just to see what happens, basically, because we haven't done a lot of that yet. All right, but now I got to get back up to the top, so maybe this wasn't the best idea. <laughs> I might be making a mess, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I might just be making a mess, <laughs> but that's okay. That's what we're figuring out, right? Okay, so now here I should be able to come up this side. <laughs> I can't really see what I'm doing very well. It's an experiment, that's for sure. But I think it'll be kind of cool when we're done. I think it'll call out these areas. Except for I'm going to end up over here again and I need to... I need to get the other way. <laughs> I keep causing more and more trouble for myself here. Maybe we just frame it. Uh, what I what I'm wanted to see by doing this is would a shape pop out more if I have all the areas around it filled. So that's what I want to try. I want to kind of see if um, if these little um, dips, these little teardrops, if they jump out at us a little bit more. I bet you there was a, w a fancy way for me to get in and out of this uh, different than what I am, what I'm doing, but that's okay. kind of fun to just totally densely fill a space. <laughs> Little, it's like, um, ooh, gosh, my, um, I have a paper clip that's getting stuck here. It's like, uh, thread painting. crazy. Yeah, I could do thread painting now. This is totally it, isn't it? Thread painting is kind of free motion quilting, but but you just move back and forth to fill a space like this and it's you can change thread colors and it's in theory just like painting. I'm densely densely stitching this, that's for sure. There's no way, I mean, you could quilt a whole quilt like this, but holy cow, you'd go through so much thread and it would be so dense. <laughs> it's so odd. All right, I gotta, I'm gonna travel up to the top again. I think we'll just add an extra little I think we'll just frame it. We'll we'll just go around our um, chevron when we're done here. In theory, this should frame our um, feather a little bit too here. Oh, they look like apple cores, yeah. Ooh, gosh, it's getting so fuzzy from this. Oops. Oops. 
sorry guys. I got a little little thread thing happening here. There we go. <laughs> I think I'm getting denser and denser as I go along. Oh yeah, definitely. I kind of want to go around this this area too. There, good enough. All right, let's get back to the beginning here. Back to where we left off. I'm going to follow, oh, this would be a good opportunity to try the ruler going up in this direction. I'll, I'm going to use the grip it as the ruler. Are we supposed to be sewing borders on your splendid sampler two bo blocks? Gretchen, it is completely up to you. So if you do borders on it, that's actually going to kind of end up being like sashing, right? Um, so sashing is sashing is basically a border around the block in the middle of a block, in the middle of a quilt, I mean. Oh man, this ruler is working awesome. I'm exactly on top of on top of my line here. Except, I'm not going to be able to go in this direction as easily because the grip it is too big. Let's see. Let's see how it handles it. I might have to get a, a, one of my skinny rulers. It's too high for my machine. Ooh, it seems to be working. All right, let's extend that. So for now I lost my grip and I'm just using my hand over here. Uh-oh. We lost! Uh, we're out of bobbin! <laughs> oh man. Let's lift up here. You guys, I'm not sure I have another bobbin wound either. It's a little early here yet. We could wind, wind another one. So my mom last time, oh no, we just have a crazy knotted mess. All right, I think actually I do have a bobbin with a little bit on yet, like enough for the rest of the evening. So let's, I'm just gonna switch to that. Yeah, so there's not, there's not much on here, but there's, there's a little bit that we can use up left yet. You're about to say, check the bobbin. <laughs> I know with all that all that uh, thread painting we are gonna use it up real quick here okay still there we go it's tough to uh, put my bobbin back in the machine with uh, with my extension table there but got it all right this is a little bit more brown bobbin All right, I gotta bring up that, um, bring it up to the top again. Did we get it? Yep, there we go. Okay. Give it a couple clicks in there, and let's <laughs> let's try this line again. Where do I lost my hand too? Let's get that glove back on. So I think my mom did sashing right away with the last with the splendid sampler one, Gretchen. I think. Um, I, I know some people are, I, I haven't decided what I'm doing with any of that yet. So I haven't, I haven't done any sashing yet. All right. So there, that was our crazy thing. I'll, I'll, um, we'll check this out later for sure. 
um, when we're done here. It's kind of fun to have like a really dense area in here. Okay, now what? It's so hard to decide. Oh, let's try, let's do a little swirl here just to fill in this shape, even though I know I won't be able to get back out of it. But then let's try, let's try the paisleys. They're off, an awful lot like this. I haven't really tried them, but it kind of makes sense. It's just like our bloops. And then we kind of travel up a little bit to do more bloops. Um, let's, let's give that a go. So let's, let's do a swirl to get out of here. And of course, I can't get in and out again. Oh my god, my swirls are so bad! And actually, I should get... Well, yeah, let's, let's get back in there. <laughs> ah! Just to fill in this space a little bit. Okay, now let's let's just try this um try this paisley thing out because squirrels are not doing it. I know I love the ribbons, but we we did that earlier, so I don't I don't know if I want to do that again. Let's try and be a little bit bigger than what we're what we've been doing here. There, and then I think we just go to the inside, or maybe we are supposed to keep echoing on the outside. Yeah, let's do the inside one first. We'll do a little bloop there. Then outside. We can go outside again, I think. All right, so I'm just gonna travel back a little bit. Trying to figure it all out. We're just gonna travel down to here. <laughs> Cheating. This one's definitely gonna take me some practice. This is a whole nother how do you get in and out of things bit. And I just don't deal with that well. We're gonna go around again. There we go. I could even put petals around them. I think I know what you're saying. Let's let's put petals around here. That'll fill this this space. Well, let's try and um. Well, we're just gonna go straight out petals. I'm not gonna do any of that little easing in. Improvising here again. Let's echo those a little. All right, I'm adding another paisley bump thing. This is looking cute. I think this is working. You vote for another frog. I know I do want to do a character in here yet. I'm trying to think of, I got such awkward spaces to fill. Um, maybe we'll have to make that our thing for Tomorrow we'll find a space. Actually, you know what? I could just draw one here really quickly. Yeah, you know what? I think we'll we'll try one tomorrow. Ugh, I really want to do one now. I'm just trying to think of. I think I can try the hedgehog. Should we just try and do the hedgehog here? Let's try that, and then I'll fill in the hedgehog around with more of these little paisley. So I'm gonna totally freehand this. Um, Let's see how it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that this is gonna be part of the back. I'm gonna make him stand on this little bloop here. Ooh, an octopus would be fun. All right, we're gonna fill in the back with a bunch of tail stuff, but let's, let's do four little legs. Two, three, 
for. <laughs> oh, this is already gonna be weird, but let's let's uh let's give him a little smile or a little nose. We'll give him a little smile too. All right, I'm gonna come back around. All right, this is gonna be his little ear. And now we're gonna start giving him some spikes. I'm gonna give him all his outside spikes and actually, you know what, I'm gonna give him his in spi inside spikes first. So we're gonna just give him some inside spikes. Let's give him another ear. I don't know if we'll be able to see that later. All right, now I'm gonna give him his outside spikes. <laughs> okay, that's something. Um, I don't have eyes on him. We could give him little glasses again. <laughs> Let's just do it. We're gonna give him crazy little glasses. Should, we, should he just have one eyeball? Let's give him sunglasses. There. <laughs> there, he, he's wearing little sunglasses. All right, and then we're gonna thread paint basically again. We're just gonna get all his little spiny bits in here. Man, I can, I can tell my sewing machine's working hard tonight. It's, uh, my pedal is really hot. Okay, so now let's, um, finish it up with some more, like, another bloop. Like we're filling it in. There, filled in the space with bloops. <laughs> ah, for weird. Let's, uh, let's, how do we, how should we, okay, I need an idea to go on this side of him so he pops out a little bit. Maybe I'll just go around him a few times, right? That seems to work. Usually, uh, maybe not. Yeah, we're gonna do it. All right, that was like a, we're gonna just meander for a little bit. I can tell it's that time that things start going downhill for free motioning. First of all, I gotta move my hands. <laughs> there, here's our like weird hidden sunglass hedgehog. <laughs> oh, a dolphin would be fun. A dolphin would actually kind of fit the space a little bit. I think we'll have to wait till tomorrow to do another animal or shape or just drawing just cause I can tell that my free motion ability is leaving me. It's good for 45 minutes, then it's, then it's going away. Although this meandering is going pretty well, and I'm surprised I usually freak out with meandering. It's more getting in and out of spaces that I, that I find super difficult. All right, but that's all. That's all I'm gonna do for meandering. <laughs> all right, and you know what? I think you guys, we got, um, we actually don't have a lot left. We have uh, maybe two and a half zigzags worth. So I think we'll for sure be able to finish that up tomorrow easy. And uh, uh, we might 
be able to even start prepping uh, this for the binding tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll finish quilting the whole entire thing and then then uh, yeah, we'll start cutting out the edge for our binding. Yeah, I'm stoked. Okay guys, I'm gonna stop here for the night though and I'll show you show you what we did here. So let's, um, I'm gonna get up real high again. Okay, so I uh, hear is just some wacky meandering at the end. Here's some wacky hedgehog with uh, with some glasses in there. <laughs> uh, silly. So, all right, here are those little paisley bloops. I I haven't really tried those before, but I think I was getting those after a little while. I kind of like that. All right, try to swirl again. That's just that's gonna be man. I still need a million years practice on that. So here's that. Uh, here's where we filled. It almost looks like spider webs a little bit, but here's where we filled in all the space around it. And it does, I mean, it does make these little goofy things pop a little bit more, but I think that would have been pretty just as is. But I did want to try something where I filled in kind of densely around that. So I think that was just a fun, fun experiment. Um, all right. And then we did, we did this little uh, bump back feather. He's awfully cute. I like how it goes. You can just fit a feather out anywhere really. I mean it really kind of fills this awkward space and then some uh, Pretty horrible swirls again, man. I don't know. I just can't I the it's it's like the math Not necessarily the math, but the forethought of getting in and out of a place. That's what swirls are that I need more practice on that still and then all these squiggles, which I just still really like. These look like flames almost, <laughs> but but I like it. All the fun, fun squiggles. So that's it for uh, tonight. And then it's we're still framing all our text from earlier. Just so silly. I'm having fun. All right, but yeah, we're, we are, um, it, here's the, the Penguin and Fish movies. All we have left is Project charming chevrons quilt that's hardly any space and then then that's it all right guys i'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening hello so there's there's the real hedgehog back there so <laughs> that guy with with some sunglasses so awesome i think uh yeah tomorrow we will finish up we just like have like you know two and a half or one and a half more zigs to zag yet and then, uh, yeah, what we're gonna do next is we are gonna trim all the way around, but we are only gonna trim the batting. We're gonna leave this background fabric because we're gonna actually roll this background fabric uh, to make our binding. We do have to cut it still, uh, but we are not gonna make a whole separate binding. We are just gonna fold it over a couple times and then that's gonna be it. And you know what? We could free motion quilt the binding on too, which would be pretty interesting. Um, oh, that's what you were saying. We could do like those little decorative bloops, like little spangles all the way around. The edge could be really kind of fun. So I don't know, uh, but that'll be our next, our next uh, deal tomorrow. We'll play around a little bit more and uh, get wrap up this quilting crazy town. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me again this Monday, and I will get this up onto Penguin and Fish movies. Uh, just another reminder, I am not going to be here on Wednesday. It's the Hubs' birthday, so we'll be out for that, but I will be back. I'll be here tomorrow, and then I'll be back on Thursday for our new Splendid Sampler 2 block. So awesome. See you tomorrow, guys. Have a great evening, and have a great Tuesday tomorrow. Good night.